Okay, well, I'm here to talk about the Argentine solution, how the unions in Argentina saved their jobs. In 2001, they were broke. By 2006, all foreign debt paid off. How'd they do that? Well, the unions said to the broke government, you got no money? We'll take small denomination bonds in our paychecks if we can use them for hydro, taxes, medical, and licenses. And you gotta admit, money that you can use for hydro, taxes, medical, and licenses, pretty good chips, right? Even in Ontario. So, I've been asking people at the Occupy demonstrations and during elections, would you take your raise in provincial bonds instead of going on strike for cash? I had a doctor, a lady doctor at a birthing clinic, they were protesting insufficient funding, and she went, of course. Well, of course, if you can spend it on your OHIT, you gotta pay, your taxes you gotta pay, your hydro, your licenses you gotta pay. Why use your cash when you can use your bonds? So why not take bonds? Save the government interest. So I was out at the teacher's demo today in Toronto, passed out my flyer, saying, hey, if you guys took bonds, we'd save so much interest, we could pay you twice the raise. Now, not too many caught on, but that's okay. The Argentine teachers caught on. Now, I don't know why they're brighter than ours. Maybe ours aren't worth the money and the Argentines are. But they caught on in Argentina, even if ours didn't catch on. But they could still, if you go out and tell them. Let's look at these problems here. Education. Gee, what's wrong with that? No money. All right, essential public services. What's wrong with that? Oh, we need more money. Housing, what's wrong with that? Not enough money. Income security, oh, not enough money. Unemployment, why unemployment? No paychecks for job, not enough money. Um, healthy uh, social infrastructure. Well, if it ain't healthy, the infrastructure means there ain't enough money. Child care, what does it mean? Not enough money. <laughs> Direct support, well, that's more money. Preventive services, why not more? Not enough money. Employment, why not? Not enough money. Yeah, uh, what are you, diverse? Oh, anyway. anyway, the point is, every single, all these problems, and you're looking for all the solutions to all these problems, when fixing the money fixes them all at the same time. Every single union in Argentina got paid with bonds. <laughs> The housing people, the education people, the services people, everybody got paid. They didn't have 12 different people screaming for 12 different answers. They had 12 different groups screaming for one same answer. And then they got it, and it worked. So, basically, last night at the record meeting, I was excluded from the debate, so they heard no solutions. The other candidates, well, major parties, they just do what their party says, but they don't have any ideas what to do. So I went home last night really angry, and I took that video. First of all, I have a video of the police taking me away. It'll be up there later tonight, too. <laughs> but I took their debate, and I played it, and I sat in front of it, and I chopped them up for two hours. Every barb, every joke, every incompetency. And it keeps saying, we need to have this, we have to have that. Well, those are A's. They never told us once. How to do it? Where to get the money? Oh, we're gonna cut here, we're gonna cut there. So anyway, you go and see the video when it gets up tomorrow. I was angry, I was vicious, I got a vicious mouth, and uh, I'm sorry other candidates who cheated me yesterday, but your party's been cheating the little guys for so long, you're taking the brunt of the beating, and I'll hang it out on my video. Uh, the 2012 National Report Card of Canada's Health Care System, just released by the Canadian Medical Association last week, as a matter of fact, shows the widening disparity between rich and poor in terms of health measures. It appears that wealth equals health, as we've talked about often tonight, is still the case for Canadians. How would your party address this issue for Ontarians? Well, Oh, you're, you're, can you put that under? Yeah. That? We'll share this mic. Okay. Yeah, that might be the, the three of you. Okay. Well, like I pointed out earlier, uh, medical is just another field where the doctors and the hospital workers can all be paid with provincial bonds. And most people want those bonds because they can go hire those doctors and those hospitals to take care of them. A perfect money system and a perfect backing for a money system. And if the Argentines were smart enough to do it, why not you? So anyway, I'll pay my tax for army and police to handle strife. 
I'll pay my tax for doctors and nurses who protect my life. I'll pay my tax for all engaged repairing road and sewer. I'll pay my tax for social servants helping out the poor. I'll even pay my tax for bureaucrats with no regret. I only object to paying tax for interest on debt. Okay, Catherine, what would you do, what your party do with the mental health crisis in KW? And I want to underscore that in our own service and community information center this past six to eight weeks, we have fielded at least three or four calls that related to people being so desperate they didn't know which way to turn and there was no easy place to refer them to. So start with John, the mental health crisis. I'm a former member of the old social credit party. And what does social credit mean? Well, some loan shark lends you a thousand bucks at 20% interest. That's not too sociable. But if the government lends you a thousand bucks no interest, gee, that's pretty social credit, isn't it? Well, I think that everybody should have an open credit line with the Bank of Canada. It would work like PayPal. You know PayPal? You log on, you open an account, you use your visa to buy in chips, or, my way, I owe you for 100 hours of labor. And at the end, you can pay it off with visa or 100 hours of labor. I just want people with only labor to offer to be able to participate in the economy. Right now, you've got to have tools, trucks, finance, capital, but not labor. Labor is the completely undervalued asset out there. Well. Time. Down with the time, gold standard, time. Money, up with the time standard. Money. So why would there be precarious employment? Gee, I guess not enough money to do it safely. If they had enough money, they could do it safely. What's the only reason they wouldn't do it safely? Not enough money, right? Back to the same problem again. Well, in Argentina, they didn't need to worry about precarious employment, right? They didn't even need to worry about precarious unemployment because everybody had a job. So, all the fears that we experience, they didn't. Now, bad times are coming, and if you don't grab the only solution that worked for other people to work for you, well, you deserve what you get. You're poor, you're suffering. Like Bible Bill Abraham said, you got the right to suffer as much as you want. And if you're too stupid to look at the Argentine solution, suffer. Okay. The question is, will you champion the eradication of poverty in Ontario? Okay. And first yeah. answer the question, yes or no, only, and then your wrap up. Yes, like apple pie and motherhood, I'm in favor of eradicating poverty too. Of course, nobody knows what causes poverty, do you? So how much success are you going to have at eradicating it if you don't know what causes that? Well, if you Google for anti-poverty engineer, believe it or not, I come up. And if you Google for anti-poverty system or software, my Let's program comes up. Heck, I'm the most famous engineer on the planet. If you Google for just John the Engineer, I come up. And why can I say that? Name one famous engineer. Nobody knows any. Only the financiers get their names on the building, not the guys who built it. <laughs> anyway, poverty is caused by interest rates, usury. Everybody borrows 10, everybody owes 11. Automatically short the moment you sign your mortgage, meaning death gamble in French contract. So, interest causes the shortage of money. Now, scarcity is a shortage of tomatoes. But poverty is a strong job to money. Over. And I want to end it. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I will champion uh, the eradication of poverty. And I very much believe that the NDP actually are but form, uh, combined with a strong economy, will, will work towards uh, creating jobs, making life more affordable, protecting health care. You know, my values align with the party, which was, which was what I'm running. And yet, I do, I do agree with some of the uh, ca candidates. You know, the work will just begin at, on September 6th. It doesn't end there. And, you know, uh, you know at the end of tonight's uh, session, I mean, I'm convinced that we need to tell the story, the human story about poverty, but also the economic cost of poverty. 
know, this is a financial issue that affects the entire province. It is a shame that not all candidates are here tonight to share their plan and to share their views. And last night. But I hope that, uh, and I'm, I'm sure we all wonder when John is going to move to Argentina. <laughs>